Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Welcome to the guided listening today. So we're going to get into some disco. Pretty close, actually. I want to listen to a Diana Ross album. The album is Why Do Fools Fall in Love? We're going to listen to a Brenda Lee remake called Sweet Nothings. There's a Michael Brecker solo on here that is ridiculous. And I want to dig into it and talk about it a little bit. Before we do that, if you haven't yet, take the 30-day free trial inside Jazzwire. Jazzwire turned four years old this week. And I want you to see what hundreds and hundreds of adult, amateur, semi-pros, what they're finding inside Jazzwire. They're finding curated information, not the fire hose that we get here on the internet, curated information. And the most important thing that I had in my development, eight years of music school, which was being surrounded by a community, a supportive community, people at my level working on the same stuff. That's how you do it. Sitting alone in your basement with yet another book, yet another PDF pack from somebody, that is not how it's done. Come into Jazzwire, let's get you moving ahead quickly. So, I was actually at the 75th reunion at the University of North Texas, I went to school there, and, um, and it was a fantastic, wonderful, wonderful experience, and uh, I met up with one of my friends, a roommate of mine from back in 1989, Paul Curteau, great sax player. He used to run Michael Brecker's website for years. He and Brecker were friends. He ran the website for years before the, the record company sort of took it over. So I was hearing, you know, Michael Brecker stories from Paul, and then somebody else mentioned there's a new Michael Brecker book, and I've loved Michael Brecker forever. I'm reading the book now. And um, one of my students came to me asking about playing like sort of funk R&B solos and how does that work and how's that like jazz, whatever. And I was reminded of this solo that I've been listening to since honestly the mid 80s. Michael Brecker playing on this tune. So let's, let's do this. I'm gonna play the whole song. It's fascinating uh, for so many reasons. The song is three minutes long. Over a third of the song, over one minute of that, is Michael Brecker playing. So it's the craziest thing. How did this song get made? And, and with Michael Brecker probably doing more than Diana Ross on it. Uh, it's an astounding solo. It's so cool. It's, you know, kind of this goofy bubblegum pop tune. But let's listen to it from the beginning. Um, it's the Brecker brothers are the horn section, um, and there's an uncredited baritone player, probably Lou Delgado or somebody like that, but you know, great session musicians. Um, and we hear Michael Brecker solo in the beginning and then a cadenza at the end. It's the craziest thing. You'll, you'll hear it. The song ends with a saxophone cadenza. What pop song ends with a saxophone cadenza? Let's check it out. Uh-huh. All right. Diana. My baby whispers in my ear. Mm, sweet yes, you are listening to J&J &J on jazz. No, not Hank Mobley. Mm, so, you know, just a great super produced pop tune, right? Probably got three chords in it. And actually, the horn parts are great. They're, they, they help the two move ahead, but they're not in your face and overdone. Randy Brecker wrote the, uh, the horn parts. And these are some of the top musicians. I'm not sure if it was a New York or an LA session, probably New York, uh, looking at some of the musicians. I love that baritone sax in the uh, break there. All right, here we go. Good Lord. Brecker. You'd think the solo would be over now. Let's keep going. Uh, 
that's it. That's the encyclopedia right there. So we'll keep listening to the end. Diana Ross, 1981. Gotta love it. Come in, darling. That's enough for tonight. Sweet nothing. It's a great rhythm arrangement, the rhythm section. And so, here comes the end of the song. That was a little tag. Here we go. End of the song, right? How did that song get made like that? Who was the record executive that signed off on a Brendy Lee remake that ends? Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, it's, I just love it. It brings a smile to my face, right? Just, you know, kind of goofy bubblegum tune. Uh, Brecker did hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Um, you know, I've seen 900 recording sessions. I've seen over a thousand. One of the most recorded sax players in history, maybe the most recorded sax player in history. And he did all these disco albums and just everything you can imagine. You know, everybody that was recording through the 70s, 80s, 90s. And then, of course, he had this incredible jazz career. So, you know, the chameleon, the ability to play, you know, like really that sounded. That was not a jazz solo. And I do want to talk about it a little bit. Um, that wasn't a jazz solo. He didn't show up like, you know, I'm going to show these guys some Benny Golson today. No, he played the gig, right? But then he could go play with Pat Metheny or wh whoever, right? And, and be so legitimate in that style. So that's one of the, you know, 400 things about Michael Brecker that's just stunning how he was able to switch and fit into those styles always bring energy and emotion. So uh, really stunning. And, you know, he had all, you know, so there was a lot of chops in that solo, um, not just fingers, but, you know, the altissimo, the ability to play high, the, you know, bending notes and, you know, all the subtleties that were in there, you know, th that's chops too. That's technique to be able to bend a note just exactly so to ghost something, you know, that, that's technique, that's, that's chops as much as wiggling your fingers quickly. So one thing I'll say, and we'll listen to it again, is his harmonic and melodic palette. He's not playing jazz. There's, I don't know that there's a single altered note that, you know, it's all coming from a pentatonic sound and this kind of, you know, pop Motown kind of thing, especially when it's in a major key like this, very often it's using the major pentatonic scale. One, two, three, five, six, one. So I think this is in the key of C. He's playing D on the tenor sax. So uh, let's saxophone. Well, I'll talk in concert. C, D, E, G, A, C. Major pentatonic scale. And lots of times we'll add the addition of a flat third. So C, D, E flat, E, F. Yeah, no F. C, D, E flat, mm, goes up pentatonic. Now there's times when he would introduce the flat seven. The flat seven, that's like, that's nothing to a jazz player. Everything gets a flat seven. I'm playing jazz. He waited on that flat seven and he leaned into that thing and it was the most astounding note you've ever heard. Um, he did it a couple times, both in the cadenza and the solo. So he knew how to use this, let's call it a more limited palette, which is the palette of this kind of music screaming inside that and so he knew how to build energy with a note that every jazz player would have started with. So it's really fascinating. Um, he's so coming from King Curtis, um, uh, oh gosh, who am I forgetting? Um, spacing on his name. Junior Walker, there it is. King Curtis, Junior Walker, you know, some of those great, you know, R&B players that came before. He's using lots of their vocabulary, a lot of these licks and, and you know, kind of little melodic moments. So he studied that stuff. So I just love one of the great jazz players and improvisers of all time, knows how to rein it in and make a statement that's about, you know, kind of emotion and swinging for the fences, because that's what this song needed. Um, and, you know, those how he'd limit himself 
and knew how to build energy. So one of the things he loved doing, he was a drummer, Michael Brecker as well, is those rhythmic moments where he would be playing a repeated note, sometimes with false fingerings to give it a slightly different sound. So how he would use rhythm. There's so much to listen for here. Um, so whenever anybody comes to me, like, you know, wanting to learn how to play in, in the style, like, you know, first of all, this is just mind blowing. So yeah, good luck to you, you know, playing this, but everything you need to know is right here. So let's do this. Let's listen from the solo and through the last bit of the tune into the cadenza one more time. Sweet nothing. This opening line he plays, oldest thing in the world. That's it. That's Junior Walker. Plays it again, second time. Just playing up that scale I was talking about, flat seven. And rhythmically, how many times did he play that note? 15? Repeated note, total record thing. And incredible altissimo, right? Those high notes. He ends the solo how he began it. I'm sitting on my that interval. How he began the solo, pretty much the same how he ended it. Interesting. Think about how that solo, how well that fits in with what's going on here, but also how astounding it is, right? He just shifted it into high gear. So uh, he did this song a favor, for sure. And this crazy cadenza. And so he comes in sassy, right? He comes in on the flat seven. No, that's not the flat seven, is it? Yeah, he comes in on the tonic. Oh yeah, that's cool. Ba -do -ba -do -da. Right? Old blues lick. So there's so much language in here that we should all be seeing. That little thing that he plays at the end, that little throw like boo ba doo doo da. From the, from the flat third, major third, up to the root. Um, that right there, learn that, play that. In every jazz tune too, right? So that's just kind of an old blues R&B kind of thing to do, but uh, man. So uh, I wanted to throw you guys a little curveball, and uh, you know, so if you've never heard Michael Brecker before, if you're coming from you know different styles or a different instrument, like there you go. And that's Michael Brecker playing, you know, kind of a goofy little three chord kind of tune. Um, wow, like what, what an inc incredible man, what an incredible player, um, you know, an icon of his era on the saxophone for sure. And uh, I've always just loved how he can move from style to style and how absolutely he, perfect he is in each one of those settings. So uh, there it is. Go listen to some Diana Ross, especially if the Brecker Brothers are on that album. Have a good time.